Welcome to a skill capped subscriber breakdown. In these videos, we first provide you with a detailed analysis of what it takes to win a given matchup by pinpointing the goals that you need to accomplish. Then, we break down a subscriber's game by highlighting where these goals were failed and where they should have done better. The result is that we're able to fast track your improvement by helping you avoid common mistakes and send you rapidly towards the writing that you desire. If you'd like to have your gameplay reviewed by rank 1 players, or to join our community filled with pros as well as other like-minded players trying to improve, join our Discord which is linked below. All you have to do is head on over to the user reviews channel and follow the instructions to submit a recording. We hope to see you there. Hey guys and welcome to a skill capped subscriber breakdown. Today we'll be looking at an assassination rogue playing an Asa Rogue Disc Priest Mirror in 2s. For those of you unfamiliar with this format, we'll start by going over the high level goals you need to accomplish in order to win this matchup before analysing the gameplay and identifying the strategical mistakes and which goals the player failed to meet. Finally, we'll take a look at any mechanical mistakes that were made. By the end of this video, you should have a strong understanding of what it takes to win this matchup and you'll also learn about how to avoid any common mistakes found throughout our analysis. So, in order to win the Asarog Disc Priest 2v2 Mirror, there are a handful of high level goals you need to accomplish. First, you'll want to train and put all of your kidneys into the Disc Priest. This will prevent the disc from being able to just stand still and pump damage into your team. Next, while you're sitting on the disc and putting your kidneys into them, you'll also want to keep your bleeds and poisons on the rogue. Now, this doesn't mean you should chase the rogue and leave the disc alone. All this means is if the rogue is near you, or you have mobility to spare, go ahead and dot the rogue while sticking to the priest. Remember, your first goal is to not leave the disc alone. Next, you should be using Vendetta on cooldown. Sitting on Vendetta and trying to wait for the perfect moment later in the game will usually backfire as you then allow the enemy rogue to Vendetta earlier than you and get a second Vendetta back to potentially win the game. So, just use it early to start forcing the Disc Priest cooldowns immediately. Finally, you should be looking for good opportunities to use Blind. This means you shouldn't just press it for no reason on someone and should ensure you get some value out of your Blind. For example, blinding someone without a trinket into a sap to reverse the pressure, or forcing a trinket with Blind and then punishing them afterwards. Alright, with that all out of the way, let's get into the gameplay analysis where we'll focus on which goals were failed. To kick things off, we see the early stages of the game looking quite normal with both discs being sapped. The enemy rogue then decides to open on your disc priest, but you decide to re-sap and then open a few moments later. Definitely a mistake here, as you're letting their rogue open first and sitting in stealth for no reason. You should immediately be opening here as you don't have any reason to wait. Here you open with the garrote and get your dots on the disc, but your decision to then run away from the disc and not kidney shot him out of your garrote is where you fail your first goal. You should be using a mark for death kidney shot as the garrote fades and committing vendetta to get a ton of pressure. We then see you fail your second goal. Instead of just dotting the rogue when he comes near, or using mobility to dot the rogue and get straight back onto the priest, you actually run off to the rogue to dot him and then you just sit on him. This leaves the enemy disc priest free to sit back and just cast damage and offensive dispels into your priest and this puts your team under pressure from what is effectively 2 DPS. Again, we see another failure to accomplish the first goal of training the disc as you decide to kidney shot the rogue. This now means you have no lockdown for the disc, nor do you have any pressure on their team. This leaves the disc completely free to play super aggressive. This forces the rogue's trinket and actually gave you an opportunity to accomplish your goal of getting value out of your blind. See. The enemy rogue has used Vendetta on your disc, which means you can completely shut down their offensive pressure by putting them into a full blind and sap while their Vendetta is up. However, you don't take this chance, and so you fail to accomplish that goal. Another thing to take note of here is that while their rogue has used Vendetta, you're still holding onto yours, with no signs of using it anytime soon. This of course means that you've now also failed the goal to use Vendetta on cooldown. This means that in just the first 20 seconds of this game, you've already failed each of the four high level goals we set out for this matchup, which is going to put you at a significant disadvantage. Moving on, you decide to blind their disc which forces their trinket, 
But as we're going to see, you end up doing nothing to capitalize on the lack of a trinket on the disc priest. And this means that again you fail to gain any value out of your blind. If you choose to blind in this way, it means you should be planning to do a big swap onto the disc or setting up a CC chain on them, for example with a fear into sap, while you kill the rogue. Now, let's switch our focus to what the enemy rogue is doing for a moment. They've now put yet another kidney shot into your disc priest, this time forcing pain suppression. They're getting this much pressure because you've left their disc completely free to play offensive. And so now with just the first couple kidneys of the game, they've already forced your disc priest dome and pain suppression, while you've forced nothing from the disc. The next play we see here is you putting yet another kidney into the rogue, which again leaves their disc free to outheal your damage and deal damage of their own. You also commit Vendetta quite some time after the enemy rogue used theirs. This means that in this segment alone, we see you fail both your goal to train and kidney the disc, and to use Vendetta on cooldown. Another thing to look for here is that your choice to Vendetta the Rogue while the Priest isn't crowd controlled allowed the Priest to completely counter your Vendetta by using their Void Stone on the Rogue. So, if you want to use your Vendetta on the Rogue like this, it's important that you have the Priest in crowd control to prevent them from using any major defensive cooldowns. Alright, so let's pause and evaluate where we're currently at in the matchup. Your decisions so far have allowed you to force both of the enemy's trinkets, but no major defensive cooldowns. Meanwhile, the enemy team has forced your disc to use both dome and pain suppression. Your disc is also under a lot more pressure, dropping quite low here, and is quickly running out of buttons to keep themselves alive. The next minute or so of the game pretty much just sees a repeat of the same mistakes, so let's skip forward to the last 30 seconds. So, we continue to see you sitting on the rogue while the enemy disc is free casting smites and penance into your disc. This of course is a continuation of failing both the goals to just tunnel the disc and off bleed the rogue. We then see yet another kidney into the rogue, this time with a step kick onto the disc, which is good and does help to increase your pressure, but at this point in the game, you're so far behind on cooldowns that just forcing the rogue CDs while your priest has nothing left to survive isn't going to be enough to win the game. At this point, the game is pretty much over. Their rogue uses kidney with their second vendetta on your priest, and while you're able to force out the pain suppression from their disc, your priest is super far behind and doesn't really have any way to catch up on their own. Now one thing to note here is that after your priest gets a double fear to try and survive and their rogue trinkets, you actually did have a way to keep the game going. Your blind has just come off cooldown and their rogue is off stun DR in 4 seconds. This means you could have done a DR blind on the rogue for 4 seconds and then followed it up with a full kidney shot to help keep your priest alive and stay in the game. Unfortunately, you miss this opportunity and again fail the goal to get value out of your blind. And so, the game ends with two maledicts as your priest is super far behind and just has no way to survive any longer. Alright, so here are the main takeaways from that analysis. You're tunneling the rogue and putting kidneys into him, which let the priest spam damage and hold on to their cooldowns for longer. Doing this meant you failed two goals. First, you failed to train and put all kidneys into the disc as all kidneys went into the rogue. And second, you were not just keeping bleeds up on the rogue when possible, as you tunneled the rogue most of the game, which meant that you were not just off bleeding him. You also didn't set anything up with blind. This meant that you failed to look for good opportunities to use blind, as only one blind was used to force a trinket, which was not punished. And finally, you had poor vendetta usage, which caused you to fail the goal to use vendetta on cooldown. This was because only one vendetta was used, and it was used 30 seconds into the game, Meanwhile, their rogue used two vendettas, including an early one, which allowed them to win the game with their second vendetta while yours was still on cooldown. Now, we're going to go over the mechanical mistakes that were made throughout the game. We've categorized these errors under damage and utility. Starting with damage, we identified three mistakes that were made. The first is that you kept using mutilate on four combo points. This actually wastes combo points and energy, Remember that at 4 combo points, you should be using Envenom. The second mistake is that you had a very low usage of Toxic Blade. 
They should basically be used on cooldown with your kidney shots. The third is that poison knife was used at incorrect times. It should only be used to keep poisons up on an off target or to generate combo points while running towards your target. It has a high energy cost and so shouldn't be used for no reason. Next, with utility, we again identified three mistakes. The first mistake is that Marked for Death was only used twice in a game that lasted over 2 minutes. It should pretty much be used on cooldown for either an Unvenom or an on-demand kidney shot at the perfect time. The second error is that Vanish was not used in an appropriate way. Vanish can be used in multiple ways to great effect. For example, it can be used to stun or silence out of a kidney shot for more pressure. It can be used to sap off blind, spread empowered groats, or just to peel when needed. You attempted to use it in the fourth way, to peel the disc, but your choice of abilities after vanishing were suboptimal. You vanished and then used cheap shot on the priest before holding your global on 4 combo points and then using a garrote. This wasted a ton of combo points and also didn't maximize the amount of time you could have crowd controlled the priest for. You should have first garroted the priest as garrote lasts for 3 seconds, spent your combo points, and then used cheap shot at the end of subterfuge. This would have ensured you don't waste combo points and would have actually crowd controlled the priest for longer. Finally, you didn't try to abuse subterfuge when given two opportunities to get an easy restealth. Okay everyone, that's it for this subscriber breakdown. Please let us know what you thought of this guide in the comments below and plus skill if you enjoyed. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.